While using my blue bowl, I came up with several modifications which seemed to make it work better, so I thought I'd pass them on to any other prospectors in case they wanted to give them a try. Like many prospectors, instead of the recommended three and a half gallon bucket, I prefer to use a five gallon bucket for my blue bowl, which creates a problem because all of the five gallon buckets in my area have this support ridge. And because of this, whether you use the legs with the smooth side on the outside, or the toothed side on the outside, almost invariably, even with the blue bowl full of water, they'll uh, pop up like this and they'll throw the level off, which creates a big problem. My solution was to use a soldering iron to melt a deep groove right at the top of the support ridge. That creates a groove into which the top tooth of the leg locks so that this can't pop upwards. This really works well. Another potential problem is that the legs of the blue bowl can slide around, especially if you bump into the side of it. And this can also throw the level off and slosh water over. My solution was to take a washer from a garden hose, slip it over each of the uh, supports in the middle, and then use a 3 8 inch uh, threaded T-nut. Tighten it down like that, and that secures the leg so that uh, when all three of them are secured, they can't move around. I found this to be uh, much more stable than just letting the, the legs uh, float around. Most blue bowls come with these inexpensive plastic garden hose valves, uh, which aren't very uh, controllable because they go all the way from full stop to full open in only a quarter of a turn. And that doesn't give you much adjustment uh, room. And they tend to just be hard to get the pre precise uh, flow that you want. So what I did is I replaced them, and this only cost about $10 for a gate valve and a couple of PVC fittings. But now I have three full turns, or about 12 times as much range the, uh, for controlling the flow. And I found this uh, provides much more precise control. I added a plastic disc underneath it, and I have a, a mark here that you can't see, and I can put marks along here to, uh, to indicate where I uh, want to set this valve for a certain flow rate. And I find that this saves a lot of time in the initial setup. Anyone who's used a blue bowl knows that they can be pretty noisy. The water falling down creates a lot of gurgling and it's okay for a few minutes, but if you're gonna be working one of these things for half an hour or so, this can get pretty annoying. Fortunately, there's an easy solution. Take a plastic bag, find out where it's dripping over the edge of the bucket, and then use a couple of clothespins to secure this right to the edge so that the water can flow over it. And instead of this, you'll have this, which I think is a lot quieter and a lot nicer. Reflections off the rippling water can make it very difficult to set up and use a blue bowl. The reason is, is you can't see what the black sand and gold are doing. Now I've set up a light to create an extreme example in this demonstration, uh, but to a lesser degree this is what happens anytime you have a light on the opposite side of the blue bowl from where you're standing. Light hits the water at an angle and reflects up into your eyes. Fortunately, the solution is uh, very simple. What you want to do is make sure that your back is to the light source. Use the blue bowl in a shaded location. Make sure there's no bright lights on the opposite side of it from you. And for the best possible view, position your main source of light next to one of your ears so that it shines into the blue bowl and any reflections reflect away from you. If you do that, instead of this, you'll have something like this. All of the gold, black sand, and anything you put into the blue bowl will be very easy to see. This also makes it simple to adjust the flow rate to get the maximum amount of separation.
one of the dangers in setting up a blue bowl is that because the flow rate for getting black sand to flow up and over the top of the cone in the center is so close to what will do the same for gold, you run the risk of losing a lot of gold just trying to get the thing set up. This is made harder by the fact that there's usually so little gold that it's hard to see how it's behaving in the flow rate you've chosen to start with. Fortunately, there is an easy and inexpensive solution, powdered tungsten. You take some powdered tungsten, which has the exact same density as gold, place it in your blue bowl, and it's very easy to see how it's behaving. You can adjust your flow rate so that the tungsten is just barely creeping up uh, about halfway up the side of the cone, leaving the black sand to go over the top. Powdered tungsten is uh, available for, believe it or not, weighting Pinewood Derby cars. Uh, the easiest source is a uh, website called Maximum Velocity. Uh, you can get three ounces of this for less than $10. Uh, this powdered tungsten is less than minus 100 mesh. It's very fine. So it will, it will behave as your finest gold will behave, which is what Miller cables are really good at uh, collecting. Another valuable visualization that the tungsten provides is that it shows just how long gold can st stay suspended in the water as it flows around the, uh, the blue bowl which emphasizes the importance of placing the gold or your sample not near the center but as far out as possible. I have seen tungsten, again with the same density as gold, circle this twice before it settles to the bottom. My last suggestion is more of an experiment than something I can say actually works. What I did is I made a cage that could be uh, slid up and down the, uh, the center hole without disturbing the flow around the outside edge, mounted a uh, piece of plastic on that, and four super magnets facing downward on the bottom of the plastic. What I do is I lower this so that as the black sand gets up near the top, the magnetic pull on it helps it up and over the edge of the center cone of the uh, blue bowl. This would seem to increase the effectiveness of the separation of the gold and the black sand. Uh, the goal is not to have the magnets actually pull the black sand out of the water and stick to the bottom of them, but just to make them a little lighter so that they separate from the gold a little bit better. You can use a lower flow rate, which uh, will should reduce the amount of gold that's lost. Uh, I'm not com completely convinced that this is a technique that's working. It seems to help, but I haven't used it enough to, uh, to say with confidence that it does. But if you want to uh, do some experiments, this is one idea you might want to try. So I hope you found these ideas for improving a Blue Bowl's operation useful and as always, thank you for watching.